AVI Limited is an industrial group which produces fast-moving consumer goods, and the group produces and distributes foods, frozen foods, food ingredients, and cosmetics. cosmetics. There we go. AVI has operations in the packaging industry as well, and has a market cap of 27.7 billion, a PE ratio of 19.72, and a dividend yield of 3.9%. Do you really look at AVI from a beauty product perspective or are we stretching it again no, here? No, 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 no. Beauty and fashion is actually big in AVI. It's big. Yeah. yeah. It's um, yes. the, the actual beauty side, which is the Yardley brands and a few others, is about 10% of profits. But then, of course, you've got the Spitz and um, the, the, the Carvela oh, and you, the, you all know that your side. brands. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see. <laughs> Do you choose? Uh, you know your brands as well, obviously. I, I, don't, my, I need to go I shopping with you. I don't own any fancy shoes, but I know the brands are. Well, thank goodness for that, Wayne McCurry. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you don't own any fancy <laughs> shoes. Better to own the shares in the shoes. All right. Now, let's talk about yep. the opportunity here from an now, look, investment perspective. AVI, has the shine has come off AVI in the last few years. You know, up until probably 2007, 2008, this was the darling, mainly on the back of fashion. But they've, they're actually quite well diversified and they've got quite a bit of Rand Hedge in the I&J business. They've got the snack business, chips, biscuits, and they've got the, 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 the shoe business and we spoke about the cosmetics business. Now the cosmetics business, looking at the results that came out quite recently, actually did quite well. A little bit of accounting funnies there because they restructured their agreement with Coty and turnover dropped. So there's a couple of adjustments you've got to make there. But it's not, it was not a bad result at all. And I actually quite like the diversification. You know, they've got all the clothing, they've got Gantz, they've got quite, quite a few really well-known brands in there. And certainly when you look at their prospects, and I mean other sectors, I&J did very, very well. But when you look at their prospects, I think they, they probably a little bit better than ShopRite's earnings prospects, and they're at a lower price. So this is actually a share I don't mind. Look at the share price there. Byron, just going mm. back to the comment that you made earlier, saying that 10% of their profits comes from the beauty arena. Just quoting you, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's about right. L give us a, a sense of well, where you, you can think see this graph is going to go from there's here. There's quite a flat period uh, for a while as the consumer was under a lot of pressure, and we've seen a nice spike um, as we've seen uh, the consumers obviously picking up. I think, you know, AVI was sort of market leaders in a South African context where they focus more on quality over quantity and I mean quality of brands um, we're seeing Pioneer pushing hard on the brands now Tiger Brands you know really focusing on, on the brand quality and AVI have been doing that like Wayne mentioned for the last seven eight nine ten years um, and I think yeah, the uh, brands were just rolling off Wayne's tongue <laughs> uh, Jimmy Choo <laughs> Gant etc and a lot of people thought they were crazy you know going into the fashion brands you know these are food producers what are you doing and they've done it really really successfully and I agree with Wayne that the mix is really good, well diversified business um, and, and I must say I really like it. Let's call it Wayne unless uh, there's anything else you, you want to add. Is there a risk here? You know, we're getting a mm. bullish sense from Byron look, on the consumer whereas look, you're very bearish. There's always risk on, on I and J. I mean there is, there is risk there. The food, the, the food prices, global prices for fish and that can change. Their harvest can change. They lost money last year on the fuel hedge. But I think they've got a more diversified portfolio that they reflect in their base market, which is the South African market. And so I think you're going to call it hot? Yeah, I'm going to call it hot, yeah. Byron? Yeah, and don't forget there that there's a nice solid dividend yield. Even at a PE of around 20, they're paying 3.5%. So I'm certainly hot on that one.